Hey guys, here today talking about the chemical bonding notes. At any point in time, feel free to pause this video, rewatch whatever you need to. This is just me going through the notes with you all. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know. Get a hold of me in class or during Tiger Focus. Here we go. All right, so chemical bonds. Basically, this is what lets us go from individual elements like, let's say, hydrogen and oxygen to water. So it's what causes these things to stick together. There is an underlying reason. We will get to that. But here we go. So a chemical bond is that force or the attraction between atoms or ions. You might want to check your vocab for those definitions if those are scary words. Bonds form when atoms share or transfer electrons, but specifically valence electrons. Valence electrons are the electrons in the outermost energy level of an atom. I've got some models to show you to really explain that. And then lastly, chemical bonds form because they give atoms a more stable arrangement of electrons. So what I try and wrap my brain around is that there are some elements on this periodic table that are highly reactive. And there are some that are hardly reactive at all. In fact, they're pretty much unreactive. Um, a really good example of a reactive element is sodium. Sodium's here. It's in group one, period three. It, based on its arrangement of electrons, it has a lack of valence electrons. Let me show you exactly how reactive it is. So they're going to take a sodium chunk of a solid chunk of sodium and place it in water. This is not special water, this is just water. All right, so chunk of sodium placed in water. Uh, yeah, it definitely caught on fire. So, some elements are very reactive. To try and wrap my mind around this, I do kind of like to think of some of these elements tending to be on the, um, I don't know, hangry side? Um, some of these elements tend to have this driving force, and it's based on these valence electrons. So valence electrons, what do they look like? What are they? So what I've done, I've kind of made a shorthand what I've done instead of, since we're talking mainly electrons, this is your image to wrap your mind around where the electrons are at and what they look like. So we're not talking protons and neutrons. I'm just going to put the atomic symbol in the middle. So this is Li, lithium. Yes, I knew you knew that. All right, so we're talking about lithium. Lithium, if you caught it, it is the third element. So if this were a neutral atom, it would have just as many positive and negative things. So three positive things, three negative things would mean zero, equals zero if we added them together. So here we go. We've got three electrons we need to arrange. Now if you also noticed, lithium is on the second period, the second row. That's how many energy levels or energy rings, as I kind of think about it, how many it should have. So on the first ring, we want two electrons. So, the first ring of lithium is having the best day ever. It is so happy. However, it still has one more electron. So, this lonely electron is a very, very, like I said before, it's, it's like a hunger almost. It's a hangry atom. It wants more electrons. It has how many electrons can fit on this ring, you ask? Eight total. So this element, along with all the elements that are on this group, have one electron out of all the other electrons that they need. So these elements tend to be highly reactive. So we've got one electron here. If we go to the next element, it's beryllium. It has four protons, so a neutral atom would have four electrons, four positive four negative. So it's doing a little bit better, but still 
still needs some work. Keep in mind, this element's on the second row or second period, so it has two energy levels. Keep that in mind. Each element I'm using is on the same period, so it'll have the same number of energy levels. Next up, we have boron. Boron has two electrons in the energy inner energy level. That was hard to say. But it has three on the outer energy level. The outer energy level is valence electrons. Boron has three of them. It's doing a little bit better, but it still has that want, that drive to fill in. Carbon, halfway there. We've got four valence electrons on the outer ring. Four total. It's doing better, but it's still not there. If we take a look, nitrogen has five. We've got one, two, three, four, five. Woohoo, doing better. Still has some empty spots though. Oxygen, we've got two, four, five, and six. So not horrible, but could be doing better. Fluorine, oh, we're almost there. It's almost fantastic. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So fluorine is doing good. It's just kind of hungry. It doesn't need a whole Snickers, just part of a Snickers. And then lastly, we have neon. Neon is on the end. Notice it's a noble gas. These tend to be highly unreactive because all their electrons are in the electron spot. They're happy. It's great. It's fantastic. They are happy. All right. So looking back at our notes, um, here's some good vocab right here, molecule and compound. All right. Anyways, why do the bonds form? The group number on the periodic table tells us how many valence electrons an element has to use when bonding. That number of electrons in that outer energy level, that outer energy ring. So how can, what's the group number again? Which one is that? It's this one. Now this is the digital version. On your printed out periodic table, you probably have Roman numerals and then you probably have one through 18. All right, both these numbers will work. Um, one, lithium has one valence electron. We can look back at our little drawing, digital drawing. It's got one lonely electron. Beryllium would have two. Magnesium would also have two. And then we can come over to, do you notice how we skip over all of these elements? We're gonna skip over our transition metals we're going to look next at boron. Boron has 13. It's a little different. So the easiest way to remember this, if you're not good with Roman numerals, which this does not have, is just take the 1 off of 13. Boron has just 3 valence electrons. See? 3 electrons in the outer ring. All right. So a shortcut, easy way to see how many electrons are available for an atom to bond with another atom you can always look up at the group number. All right, it's always near the top of the table, though not always at the very top. All right, so moving on. All right, we've got a nice picture of two lonely hydrogens floating around and an oxygen. They're floating around. If you notice, hydrogen only has one energy level, one energy ring, so it only wants one more electron. All right. Whereas an oxygen, it's got one, two. Let's look back. What number is it on the periodic table? Oh, it's oxygen. It has six. If you take that one off, it's got six valence electrons. So it really wants two more because it's got one, two, three, four, five, six. It's two away from that magical number of eight. So if it bonds with two H's, two hydrogens, it fills up that want, that need, 